Ooh, what's up guys that guy with the pencil here the prophecy of the seven plus two yeah you see all these extra characters down here and for this edition of tier list tuesdays since i've only just recently reread the heroes of olympus i'm just going to talk about the boys and the girls that were really the main players in the heroes of olympus because those are the ones that are most relevant for me to talk about right now doing this in honor of the percy jackson the olympians disney plus series that's apparently going to drop soon according to reordering we just got that announced that's great figured i'd do this and let's get talking about it because i feel like you feel some people are going to agree with my opinions a lot of people aren't going to agree with a lot of my opinions too it's really going to be a flip up and honestly i feel like the why do you exist here is a little bit too mean for this one so we just gonna lower that to uh we just gonna lower that to uh why <laughs> because they all these characters they're well written enough that they have a reason to exist they just don't buy for me for a personal reason and you know it started from the bottom now we hear frank why do you exist because the whole team didn't need okay here's my thing about frank like he's literally just my least favorite character i don't think he's a badly written character i think he has some really interesting developments i think his personality is i and honestly no i can't even say i think his personality is all right i think frank is boring i think frank is very very boring and it's it's weird to say that right because what he's he's a shape-shifting son of mars with a whole host of abilities he literally transforms into a dragon how can you not find that cool and i know right i also wonder why i don't find that cool i think it's just frank himself that doesn't really do it for me and of course his backstory in comparison to a lot of the other characters and you're gonna find out how much i value backstory um in comparison to a lot of the other characters because Heroes of Olympus, obviously, it was a sequel series. So you had, like, background for Annabeth and Percy and Nico specifically. You really had background for them, but you didn't really have background for Frank. So this, what Heroes of Olympus had to do was give you a quick background check on all these characters. And if it wasn't interesting, and it wasn't... Well, if it wasn't interesting to me, I didn't really care about it so much. And since backstory is such a big part for me, Frank's backstory is just the fact that he has Neptune lineage... He's a shapeshifter, and he does Ares things, or Mars things. I mean, Sai, I don't, I, I don't really care. And like Frank, Frank is just boring to me. I know it's weird to say. It's so, it feels so weird to say that Frank is boring because he has his cool moments. He has the fact when he slays all those cow monsters in, um, I think it's in Venice. No, he slays all those. Basically, he slays all the cow monsters in the, in that one town. He has his transformation into a true son of Mars. He does all this stuff he commands a whole army of the dead like you think that all the different parts of frank would come to prove something interesting to me but i don't know like frank is just such a why character like in, in, in comparison to his contemporary yeah it was venice he slayed all those cow monsters in venice um compared to all his contemporaries he's just not as interesting to me not backstory wise not personality wise even his powers which they're, they're just they're, it's just not that interesting to me and i feel like his arc his arc of like coming to terms with himself is done better with other characters so i don't think that he's even his own arc at least the arc that i saw maybe he has another arc that i don't know i didn't notice and i didn't highlight maybe he has something for him going for him i don't see it frank you you're you're a why like why but luckily enough no one else should be a why and going on to the next character see like i've deliberated with myself so much about this and i know a lot of people ain't gonna be happy with your boy but yes i'm putting percy in meh and the reason percy's going in meh is specifically because as much as i love heroes of Olympus, as much as i love the percy jackson series as a whole i don't remember much of percy in his original series that was really where a lot of his backstory and good stuff kicks in i don't remember much of that and from what I've heard, the reason I probably don't vibe Percy that much is because a lot of people say he's out of character in Heroes of Olympus. Percy was kind of just there to be like the icon of demigods in Heroes of Olympus. I'm not necessarily sure what his arc was. I'm not sure. Like, it's, it's not like I'm not sure why he wasn't there. He was there for a good reason. He has his cool moments, like when he completely just drowned an entire Roman legionnaire army because... Annabeth dropped her dagger into the water. She, he has that. He has the fact that Hazel straight up just compares him to a Roman god as he's going through destroying an entire army of legionnaires. Like, Percy Percy is like... Oh, why? How do I say this? I don't want to say he's forced cool. But, like, you're supposed to look at Percy and be like, oh, man, he's so amazing. But I'm just like, eh. 
he's all right. <laughs> he's like, he's mad. He's like, he's messing me. And I know we're going to be like, you're insane. And, I'm, and I got to be like, you're absolutely right. Because he doesn't vibe with me personally. Percy Melly. But yeah, and even his backstory. Like I, I got into this with Frank. But Percy's backstory, I know it's it's really sad. It comes from an abusive household, and he fixed that at the end of the first book. I remember that much. But, like, once again, in comparison to his contemporaries, eh, I don't, I don't really... And, it's, and another thing that I guess doesn't really... You know, I just thought about this. Another thing that gives a lot of characters points for me in Heroes of Olympus that Percy nor Frank have is that they are... Their past are strictly tied into the present and the future in Heroes of Olympus story. Percy's real story was Percy Jackson and the Olympians. He was kind of just there because he was an attention grabber for new fans for Rick's new series. That's literally all he was there for. So when you have him there, it's just like, oh yeah, he, he did his job. He baited me into it. He baited me into reading it. That's cool. But in comparison to his arc, for his backstory, in comparison to all of the other people he has, he's meh. He's alright. And Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i think but those are like really the two bottoms here it's sad because they're both like descendants of neptune slash poseidon but i'm gonna put hazel up in okay and the reason i put hazel up in okay is because hazel's backstory is wild she was she was born because her mom asked pluto for all the riches of the earth and he technically she technically got that because of the Hazels came with a curse, and that curse was so heavily entwined into Hazel as a person that Gaia, in her deep sleep, realized, oh, I could use this to revive my kid in Alaska to make him uh, invincible here. So she, no, she literally, Hazel was so important. Like, you couldn't have Heroes of Olympus without Hazel because she was such, she was so intertwined into everything. She's tied into Frank. She's tied into Leo. She's tied into all of that. She's one of the main reasons that the titan the giant war didn't happen so soon she's one of the, she delayed it by 70 plus years that's wild and then you have all her abilities she's a daughter of pluto and while we had already seen a variation of like a child of the god of the underworld we hadn't seen it in the hazel side where you go towards the riches and like she's able to control metals and is really good underground and stuff like that and like I said, I don't remember much of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, but I know there are a lot of times where someone like Hazel would have been way more useful in a situation than someone like Percy or someone like Annabeth, because just because of her power set. Her power set's cool to me. It's where Hazel really, um, I can't really say drops the ball, because she never necessarily drops the ball anywhere. The reason she's just okay, like mid, like direct middle. Like if I didn't, if I had to say she's like pure middle, it goes to the fact that her personality, like it, it's all right it goes to the one guy that she's like from a previous time that's okay i guess and then the rest of her personality and i also just didn't like what she did with leo and frank in mark of athena like mark of athena is honestly my favorite book out of the entire fears of olympus because it's it's when it's when the gang gets together in my opinion that's what that, that is like the peak of heroes of olympus of course the peak is the middle i don't like what she did with um frank and leo that was really really awkward all the whole same situation it was just it was awkward like it was a cool part of her backstory but then her backstory started to interact with the present in a weird way didn't really vibe with it i think her personality is also okay nothing really that interesting to discuss with her personality i like her i like her relationship with hackett i think she's stupidly strong too not only can she tear your weapons away from you but she can literally alter your perception so much with the mist that jason himself believed he was an old man at the start of blood olympus like his bones were rickety he was he, he was completely convinced just from her training with Hecate, and that's really cool. I like that. But everything else about Hazel, really, really okay. Can't really praise too much about it. Um, getting into the next okay character, we're going to have to leap real headstrong into Piper. So Piper, it's very, very mixed on Piper because the backstory, while interesting enough, you know, son of a Hollywood person because of Aphrodite, yada yada yada. I find that interesting enough. I like I like her personality. That's something that where where she gets a lot of points where like she is torn between accepting herself as a natural daughter of Aphrodite and also not wanting that because she has such a negative association with being the beauty queen and being of this perfect because of her dad because of Tristan McLean and all the stuff he went she went through because of his backstory and how 
much that like it, it sort of just causes this constant turmoil that you always see where she fights what she is and then her arc is learning to accept what she is and to use that to her favor and in my opinion she has some of the coolest moments ever like the the when she, the fact that you couldn't have beaten gaia without her you couldn't twice like hera would have died and gaia wouldn't have been defeated if it wasn't for piper in her charm speak that that that's cool when she when she's on the ship in the argo 2 after the incident i think yeah the incident in kansas where jason and percy almost kill one another and she's just like hold on if you are not of this ship show yourself and then then you just well I, I can't even say the images you read and you figure out that oh yeah leo percy and jason are all possessed and they and you have that whole scene where she's like literally fighting back against their own free will using her trying to speak that's cool and for a person who has no like shape shifting water control control of caverns she takes what little niece she has as the daughter of aphrodite and stretches it for miles she talked she talked multiple high level beings the goddess of the earth goddess of of snow her two brothers like multiple times she's used what little she had and just stretched it stretched it so far in such an interesting way that i just gotta give it to her i like her personality i like her her backstory is okay i like her um her, i like how she stretches her power set i think she's really really good actually you know what yeah yeah, yeah, you know what? Pepper's going to be great. I actually do think Pepper's really, really good for this narrative specifically. And if we had to get into, uh, actually, you know what? I keep, I feel kind of bad, but I'm going to put Nico in, okay? And the reason Nico's in, okay, is because, one, he was mean to Percy. He was mean to Percy in Son of Neptune. I was kind of just like, really, bro? Like, you, like, you couldn't have told him anything? Like, you couldn't have even, like, promised to keep him updated on something like that? That was that was kind of suspect of Nico, and then you have the whole fact. Well, he he is very very metal. Like I I, under, I understand that he literally went through Tartarus on his own. Like two of the mentally strongest and physically strongest in the case of Percy, demigods of all time, at least in the Percy Jackson verse, literally couldn't have made it through Tartarus without one another. Nico did it alone, and then proceeded to put himself into a death trance for a, like multiple weeks like he, he's super metal and i'll give him that i remember his backstory having something to do i think it had to do with the lotus hotel he was stuck there for a while he was stuck there for a really long while but other than that i don't remember like what cool what cool moments nico has he he has the fact that he's super metal like that is a fact that i gotta respect however what I don't necessarily vibe with too hot is obviously what he did. Um, he's 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 really okay because I can't I can't vibe with him fully. Like he's 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 super integral to the plot, obviously. Like if without Nico, they wouldn't have been able to get the Athena Parthenos. The guys would have never been reunited. Everything wouldn't have been reorganized. Everyone would have lost. That's great. But also, once again, you hit the fact that he's not necessarily like he is a holdover from percy jackson and the olympians and i know this is a problem with rick's writing especially when you get to something like trials of apollo which i have read and one of the things i really don't like about that book is he entered he has characters from his older series just to grab readers who came from those older series and it they don't necessarily work well like i'm once again i can i've just reread the entire series recently like in the past month and i'm not sure what nico's arc was like him him he has i can't really call him moment cool he has a good character moment when he's forced to come out by cupid like he that works as uncomfortable and forced as the scene is for a character like nico that works a lot but i i personally just it doesn't it, that's like the biggest moment of character that he has and then he's just neat he's just He's reduced the emo boy for the rest of the series at least and that's what he very very simply i understand that but that's where he falls for me that's why he's okay his backstory eh, don't remember much of it and while he does some metal things he's not the coolest i don't find his personality that interesting to talk about either he's very very middle okay uh you want to talk about another <laughs> great metal character okay okay so 
Reyna, I can't even say her full name. I, yeah, I'm not even gonna attempt it. Reyna, metal as ever. Like, I know, she, I, apparently she was in Percy Jackson and the Olympians. I remember none of her from that. I don't remember Hilla nor Reyna from, from Percy Jackson and the Olympians. But from what I've gathered, she's always been metal. Like, she was trapped on an island for forever, then proceeded to live on a ship of tyrants, take that whole thing over, was offered a position in the Amazons, one of the most powerful groups of people in, in the entire world, decided, nah, I'm not gonna go do that. I'm gonna go to this Roman camp since my mom's Valona, and I'm just gonna take the whole thing over. And she did. She became Praetor. That's respectable. That's 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 some wild stuff. Then she goes, she's apparently went on multiple quests before, went along with Jason, did, did so much legendary stuff, and then you have all this only to stack on top of that, oh yeah, you know what took seven demigods, a fully powered warship, a satyr, and a dragon? Have her do it on her own. They crossed the Mediterranean, left the safe lands, which is the western hemisphere, went back over to the eastern hemisphere, all on her own, with one Pegasus, made it all the way there. That is wild. Can we talk about how crazy Reyna is? Like, crazy in an amazing, cool way. Like, bro. That's some, she did some metal stuff, my guy. And then you have you have her personality, which is very, very no nonsense, but you have the always the subcontext that she's so sad and alone. Like the the fact that she plays a leadership role and she has to do what she does because it's just, it comes natural to her. Her mother is someone who empowers people and that's her job too. Like she fits into her role so well, but you can tell that as whatever face she puts on she still is a person and it's so sad to hear that all she's gone through she's been lonely her entire life even with her sister there since her sister went off and became queen of the amazons she's she's so well connected she's so tied she's tied into the world very well her character's great her backstory's metal everything about reyna is really 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 cool and i like all i like it a lot i like it a lot and the final character i'm gonna have to put in great <sighs> Leo, I wish I could put you into perfection, bro. I like Leo a lot. I like his personality. And I like his backstory. His backstory... His backstory, when specifically in reference to Heroes of Olympus, is so, so cool. It's... it's Because when the more you think about it, the more crazy it is. So one, he was hunted down specifically by Gaia. No, Phineas specifically pointed Leo out as a threat to Gaia's plan. So Gaia literally stirred herself from her slumber just enough to specifically make sure that Leo would be traumatized. That's quite, that's crazy. That's crazy. The fact that he has to pee technically, well, I'm not sure if it was specifically he did it. That was always ambiguous. He technically burned his mother alive. And then he has to pick up this like thrifty living personality just, just to survive. And he's also super sad. And he's also very lonely, just like Reyna. He goes through all of this and then he's watching like oh you know all his friends and fellow contemporaries being happy in their own relationships well he's just sitting there like single and always ready to mingle my guy he, like he's he's has a great backstory i really like his personality because you can tell he's funny because he has to be to keep himself happy like he doesn't make jokes for anyone else they his jokes merely make people laugh he's just trying to stay himself and stay solid minded like that's that's what he does to keep himself himself and that's really sad but it's also really good to watch like i like it and where leo falls off like he would be in perfection with um some other characters but what makes leo falls off is that he picks up percy's sloppy seconds that's basically what happens in the case of leo and calypso and like i, rem I remember vaguely not liking the end of Heroes of Olympus. I'm just wondering, why Why do you, Why do I not like it so much? One, I feel like Calypso X Leo came out of nowhere. Like, I was just like, really? This is what we're doing? And, like, the fact that that ties so heavily into the prophecy on Oath to keep the final breath. Like, I feel like, sure, it probably was planned from the start, but I feel like Leo's involvement in the ending was stupid. Because you, 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 you set up Gaia, right? Gaia is this legendary primordial being the earth itself and you would think like maybe maybe not because rick riordan and fight scenes don't necessarily mix together with a big final fight scene it's obviously probably not what the narrative is about but gaia was so well hyped she seriously was to go through 
all this hype technically across like 10 books i'm pretty sure i for some reason i distinctly remember guy being mentioned all the way back in percy the lightning thief that's how that's how hyped gaia was only to have her die to leo like somehow leo killed gaia but he didn't destroy festus in the physician's cure excuse me like if leo died he'd be in perfection like like on, on hands down if leo died and stayed dead that would have been perfect i would have i, I would have liked the end of the series a whole lot more because it feels like that would be that would be an even sacrifice a life for life like an immortal life for a demigod life that would have been perfect no one dies and the, then leo leo stays alive only to go with this girl that he met with like three weeks ago he does all that meanwhile he's been friends with piper and jason for months and doesn't even send him a word like he doesn't tell them like i, I feel like i would have felt better about leo if he had told everyone his big plan and i know he says oh people would have tried to stop me i'll just do it anyway because that that that's honestly what it comes down to where it's just like well there's no other way to defeat her <sighs> like leo leo did a backflip the backflip looked really really cool like he had the good launch he had the good start off he got all the way through the flip but then he landed flat on his face and it just it just saddens me he's still great though like i like his personality I like his backstory I like how everything ties so well like he's su he's such an integral part to heroes of olympus specifically and that's so cool but that ending ending endings really matter a lot to me personally like you can have a fantastic story but if you fumble the ending that's what i'm gonna remember the most because it's the beginning and the end of something you tell me that's going to matter the most. So that's why I value backstory so much. And I value an ending so much. Because those are those are the things I remember. So that's why I just didn't like the ending of Hero of Olympus. Because Leo's ending, awkward. Like the end of that book is just awkward. I even think most of the series is super well written. Like character wise, it's all very well written. It's just that, ooh, that ending, that ending. Ooh, that just jacks me up every single time I read it. But to get up into some perfection, let's talk about Annabeth Chase and how she became her own character. Oh, bro, bro. I right. so I remember nothing of Annabeth's backstory. I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. I know she like has stepbrothers and her mom didn't like her. And I'm not sure how much of this whole spider thing was built up in the original series. Cause I just don't remember Annabeth from the original series. I remember like, I remember two things from the original series. I remember Grover and Cairo, and that's about it. I don't even remember much of what they did. But from what I remember, I remember thinking Annabeth was like always super reliant on Percy. But then this, it just flips like by by having her a whole book centered around her. It really, really works. And the great thing that I like about Annabeth is that she is such an integral part that you don't notice how important she was until she's missing. Like when, when she falls into Tartarus, well, not even, even before that, when she, like, tells everyone, oh, yeah, I have to go on this quest, everyone's just like, uh, hold on, but you're, like, our main strategist, our main planner, and, like, the fact that she has no powers, like, everyone to some degree on this list has power. Jason, son of, son of Jupiter, shape-shifting, water manipulation, manipulation of the dead, riches manipulation, charm speed, empowerment, fire. Annabeth is just a girl with a knife, and she does so much. She leads everything. She gets the hunt down for Percy. Everything ro rolls around. She's the one who, pi not pilots, she guides the Argo 2 along. She does so much. She, she does what thousands of her brother, well, maybe not thousands, hundreds of her, her brothers and sisters couldn't do. Found the Mark of Athena, tricked Arachne, got it back, and then proceeded to crawl through Tartarus. And now you may be like, well, Percy crawled through Tartarus, and I'm just like, but Anna did it better, though. Like, the fact that she, and the fact of the matter is that she's she's she tries to portray herself in a similar vein to reina she tries to portray herself as such this hard cold logical thinking person but the, mo the moments where she breaks like when you like what moment will always stick with me when she's afflicted by all those curses and totters and she's just looking for person because like the one person she thought would be with her to the very end like she sure was betrayed by her mom her fam her family didn't like her she Luke betrayed her. Talia left her. Like she was left with nothing in that moment. And that's just so sad. And I like that. Because it, it it shows 
that shows the duality, which is what is which is what I think characters like Frank, characters like Percy, he has a little bit of that in Tartarus, but then it gets immediately quashed by Annabeth. Characters, all these characters, even to some degree Piper, all these characters like that nice coin flip of duality that Annabeth has in spades, and it's great to see how she not only leads the team as an effective team leader, but she leads them as a friend, and that's really, really cool to watch. See, she she has, like, all of Mark of Athena is just metal the Annabeth. Like, she just does crazy stuff throughout that entire book. House of Hades, same thing. She crawls. She fights off an army of monsters in their home base while fighting the embodiment of said home base, Tartarus itself, even though I think Tartarus was wasted, and does it all with a dragon bone sword. Metal. Like, what do you want from me? Annabeth's so cool. And, um, I guess that's why I that's something infection for me. I guess another reason I don't like Percy so much. We started the apocalypse with a nosebleed. Come on now, my guy. You control water. Why don't you just bend it back up? But, to get to the last character, my favorite character out of Heroes of Olympus. And I know, I know your Percy stands about to come out the woodwork and be like, Bro, you're wrong. And I'm just like, I mean, I guess you're right, dog. I guess I am wrong. But, Jason... Jason, Jason, Jason. My boy got the arc. My boy got the backstory. My boy got the integrity. My boy has everything that makes me like him so much. His backstory. The man was abandoned at two years old by his own mother to live with wolves. My guy stayed with wolves for two years. As a two, he was a toddler. He could probably barely walk and say his own name. He went through it. He lived that. Then he proceeded to go into Camp Jupiter around age four. At around age four. And he proceeded to not only be raised in there, he grew up, was respected as a son of Jupiter, obviously. And then proceeded to just do quest after quest after quest after quest after quest after quest after quest. After quest. And he went to the fifth cohort, one of the most disrespected cohorts, brought that back up. He brought respect back to a whole cohort that was disgraced for generations upon generations. Did all that. Then proceeded, like, the, the biggest thing about Jason's backstory that will always get me, and which is why I always wonder who I like more, Jason or Percy, I don't know, towards Jason. Percy, he, he beat Titans before. I think he, he beat Bob, or whatever Bob's name, real name was, I'm forgetting. He beat Bob. But Jason didn't beat Kronos. Luke beat Kronos. I remember specifically being mixed on the, the ending of the original Percy Jackson and Olympians for that reason specifically. But you know Jason, dude? He toppled Cronus' throne. Supposedly on his own. He went up against Creos himself and whooped Creos. Top of the Black Throne. Protected the entire West Coast. Jason's metal, and that's just in his backstory. Then you get to Jason's actual personality, because he's he like Piper, like Annabeth, like Reyna, like even to a degree like Leo. He's so conflicted because due to him's dad being Jupiter, he's just like I have to be the leader. It's my job. It's my bloodline. Yada yada yada. But he doesn't want to. Be, he just wants to be a person. But everyone automatically looks to him because of what his dad is, and he and he plays that role. He. He's forced to play, especially when Annabeth and Percy are just gone, gone. Because already he was scared enough that he was, he had to lose Annabeth for like a few weeks, because or a little bit because she was going off to complete the Mark of Athena. But then he's forced to take up the leadership role. He sits at the head of the table. I think it's Piper who mentions that specifically. I forget the exact chapter in House of Hades, but you literally have at Piper. Note, I think it's Piper. Like, oh yeah, he does not want to be happy sitting at the head of that table. Because you know he, he knows he has to take up the mantle. He's forced to do it. And one thing that I really like about protagonists, I like it when they're active. I like when a protagonist has a goal and they do everything in their power specifically to go out and complete it. And that's what Jason's problem was. He was very, very reactive. Like he was hit, He and he, honestly, because he was forced to. Abandoned, that wasn't his choice. Raised by wolves, that wasn't his choice. The only, But whenever he made a choice, he went hard at it. He was the one who decided, I'm going to the fifth cohort. I don't care if they're disrespected. I'm going to make it respected. He goes and does does that. When he comes to going up against Creos, oh yeah, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go dead that. He, when he has to go back and get all those missiles for Camp Jupiter, yeah, I'm going to go do that. 
Jason's very, very active, but it's always under this pretense that he has to be active. So when he get his little point where he's in the wind palace with the um, summer wind, I think it's the summer wind Zephyrus, and you have him be like, he keeps asking, he keeps asking for permission to leave. And then like the guy just looks at him and is like, Jason Grace, what are you going to stop asking? What are you just going to do? When are you just gonna take control of your own destiny? And it isn't just like, actually, yeah, you're right. I'm gonna take control of my own destiny. And he just does, he grabs the reins and just pushes. Like he pushes so hard and that is amazing. Like I, and his personality, once again, I love, I like that duality where like he's, he is a natural born leader technically. Obviously it's in his bloodline, son of Jupiter, but also he did, he takes to the mantle well. He led the quest and but he also has that point where he just wants to be happy with Piper. Like, one of the saddest things that happens in Trials of Apollo for me is that Jason and Piper broke up. Because it's just like, Jason literally imagined Blood of Olympus. Him and Piper as an old couple with grandkids. And he's telling them about the future. Because that's what Jason wants. He just wants to be happy, my guy. He wants to live a normal life. But he can't. Because of the circumstances that are so far out of his control but he takes what little control he has and he drives with it jason's perfection in my mind i like his back his backstory's metal he's metal everything about jason really just straight perfection but yeah all these other characters once i finally reread um, percy jackson the original percy jackson the olympians i'll probably get to these i could i could do calypso and i could do uh, octavian but I'm going to leave it be for here for now. I've been talking too long as it is. Regardless. This is my two. And it's honestly in character order. Like if I had to do a top nine. I'd definitely go Jason, Amber, Leo, Reyna, Piper, Nico, Hazel, Percy, and then Frank. That, 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 that would be my top nine for the main characters. And you know who else would go up pretty darn high? Yo, Coach Hedge would probably be like number three. Yeah, Coach Hedge. That's my boy. I think Coach Hedge is better than Grover. Because at least I remember Coach Hedge. I always remember Coach Hedge. Anyway, regardless, thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Chillers Tuesdays. Yo, get hyped for the Percy Jackson and the Olympians Disney Plus series. I have high hopes for it. I think it, it can be good, especially with Rick working on it. But regardless, what I'm going to have to ask you to do, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And especially if you want to get, if you want to keep content like this, just constantly in your inbox, just hit that little notification bell, because I'm not sure how youtube's working right here right now if you're seeing my videos or not so if you see this video subscribe hit that notification bell please if you like the video leave a comment always helps even if you didn't like the video leave a dislike and then leave a comment why you didn't like the video yo talk to me about this one specifically because like i may have a whole conversation with you about each one of these characters because i really 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 like heroes of olympus like out of since i remember it so much and obviously since i just reread it, it's my favorite out of all all three all the series that rick has written like I need to reread King Chronicles of Light. Yeah, I, honestly, yes. Talk about that. I will talk with you about this in the comment section. Please comment down below what your opinions are on with this list. I will talk forever with this. But regardless, thank you guys so much for watching, as always. And once again, this is that guy with the pencil writing.